afternoon, everyone. My name is Keith McBurnett, and I'm superintendent of schools for uh, Burnett CISD. And as excited as I am to share information with you about the school district as part of this state of the district address, uh, I also have to recognize the fact that I typically am speaking at the state of the community address. You know, for the last eight years, the city and the school district has collaborated on a state of the community event in which we get to enjoy some great barbecue and the mayor and I have a chance to share some information with the community about uh, each of our organizations. And so I am missing the fact uh, that we're not all together in person due to COVID, uh, but I am looking forward to next March. So go ahead and mark your calendars now uh, for that first Wednesday in March next year, where we can enjoy some great barbecue and uh, great fellowship while learning a little bit about the city and the district. Well, I'm going to jump right into it, and you know that two weeks ago, uh, we were experiencing a historic winter weather event, and I just want to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you to the Burnett CISD staff that responded to make sure that our, our campuses and facilities were taken care of and that our students were taken care of. I also want to say thank you to the city and county workers uh, that made sure that the, the power stayed on, the water stayed on to the greatest extent possible, to our first responders that were making sure uh, that that we were safe and that they were responding to emergency situations. And that's just one of the reasons why I love being a part of this community. Uh, when we face challenges, we come together and we take care uh, of, of ourselves. And so uh, the best choice I ever made was uh, accepting the job to be superintendent here in Burnett CISD and bringing my family and raising my two boys here uh, in this community. In terms of the winter weather event, um, couple things I want you to, to know. Uh, because of the number of minutes that uh, our school board had approved uh, before the school year ever started, uh, because of those minutes, along with a waiver from the Texas Education Agency for missed school days, uh, I'm happy to say that none of our students will have to make up any of the missed time uh, due to uh, that winter event. And so the approved calendar uh, that is published on our webpage will remain uh, the same for students for the rest of the school year. Uh, in terms of our staff, our Board of Trustees just recently approved uh, making sure that our staff does not need to make up any of the missed uh, days and uh, that they will be compensated uh, for those missed days of work. Uh, in terms of uh, services for our, our students, we were able to provide grab and go meals uh, for three days during uh, that school closure. We wanted to do more, but we had to make sure we were able to do it safely. And so thank you to those food service workers that prepared the meals and for our staff that delivered those meals uh, to our, our students. And then finally, uh, I've shared already through uh, social media about uh, the Burnett High School Auditorium and Bulldog Stadium Drive, both sustained damage during the winter weather event. Uh, we are working with insurance adjusters to make sure that we uh, renovate both of those uh, areas, the high school auditorium. In fact, our restoration uh, contractor is in district today uh, reviewing the damage at uh, the Burnett High School Auditorium. And then Bulldog Stadium Drive, uh, as a reminder, uh, that project was already slated as part of our uh, May 2021 bond uh, program, uh, but we're looking at you know, whether or not we are going to be able to do that work even sooner uh, than uh, the bond program. So I'm going to go back in time just uh, a little bit, and I've already mentioned that we typically we're having uh, the State of the Community event, but a year ago, almost to the date, on March 4th, we were uh, meeting and uh, having the State of the Community address, and little did I know, nine days later, on Friday, March 13th, would be the last day of in-person learning for the 2019-2020 uh, uh, school year. And it is not lost on me at all that that was a, a Friday the 13th. Uh, so we had spring break uh, immediately after uh, that Friday the 13th. And then uh, that next week, uh, our staff went, uh, went to work, making sure that we were ready uh, to continue to serve students, even if our buildings were physically closed. And so uh, in just a week's time, uh, our staff stood up our Distance Dog 1.0 uh, that included uh, online remote instruction for those students that could access uh, online remote instruction, and then also paper packet instruction. And so our teams were producing hundreds of paper packets 
uh, every week for our students. And so, uh, again, even though, though we were closed, we were still taking care of the instructional needs uh, of our students. We offered hundreds and hundreds of grab and go meals uh, every day at locations spread out across the 700 square miles that make up uh, Burnett CISD because it was important not only to provide uh, for the instructional needs of our students, but also for uh, those uh, food service needs that they had. And then I want to brag on on our high school staff. You know, uh, being a senior in the year 2020 was pretty challenging. Being a student in the year 2020 uh, was pretty challenging. There were lots of things that we weren't able uh, to do due to COVID uh, protocols. But during a time in which Lots of school districts and high schools said, yep, we're going to cancel all in-person events. Uh, our high school staff really stepped up and made sure that to the greatest extent possible, we did uh, those capstone events uh, for our students that make that senior year special. And so we hosted an in-person senior parade uh, for our seniors, and then we had an in-person graduation ceremony. And so uh, we knew it was important for our students to walk across the stage and just super proud and offer lots of thanks to our high school staff for making that happen. Again, during a time in which lots of high schools across the state said, yep, we're just not gonna have an in-person graduation uh, this school year. And so as we ended uh, last school year, then the work began to plan for uh, this 2021 school year. And so that work began this summer. Uh, Unfortunately, the Texas Education Agency didn't release all of their formal health guidelines or uh, the remote instruction uh, criteria we needed to use to get our plan approved until July 17th. And so literally in a month's time, uh, our team put together a remote inst instruction uh, plan that was approved by the Texas Education Agency. We were one of the first uh, districts in the state to have our plan approved and uh, put together a comprehensive uh, health and COVID protocol uh, guidelines because we knew we wanted to make sure that uh, health and safety of our students and staff was our, our prime uh, concern. And so we put together a plan that we believe uh, created a safe learning environment for our students. Uh, to do that, uh, we've spent over $750,000 to date on COVID related expenditures, everything from uh, 3,500 Chromebooks to 300 hotspots, and then lots of uh, PPE and materials and supplies to mitigate uh, the possibility of COVID spread taking place on campus. Um, what it, something I think that it's important for you to know that there's a little bit of a misnomer out there that all of that money is being reimbursed. Uh, the district's being reimbursed for those expenses, and that's just not uh, the case. You may have heard of uh, CARES funding, uh, that school districts received. And in reality, uh, we didn't receive any additional funding uh, from the state or federal government. Uh, what did happen is last year when we had to go into the emergency uh, closure due to the governor's order, uh, we were not uh, earning our attendance uh, credits that we typically do during an in-person uh, setting. And so uh, with that CARES Act, the state chose to, com to com uh, continue to fund us uh, during that closure, which we are very appreciative uh, that we were continuing to receive our funding during the time in which we were offering uh, remote instruction and grab and go meals, but it did not result in additional funding, but it, COVID has resulted in additional expenditures uh, to our operating budget. Again, uh, $750,000 plus uh, in expenses. But we think we put together an outstanding plan that allowed a parent from day one to have a choice of in-person instruction or remote instruction. And I think our numbers show that we've done it in a safe way. Uh, so since the beginning of school, when you combine students and staff, we've had a total of 95 confirmed COVID cases on campus. Uh, we've had a larger number of close contact determinations. So when a student or a staff member is COVID positive, then uh, we are required to do contact tracing to determine who was in close contact with that person. We've had 268 uh, students or staff members that have had to quarantine uh, due to that close contact determination. Almost in every one of those situations, it was a situation in which uh, face coverings were not required. Uh, and so that did result in students being quarantined uh, for 
14 days during the first semester, and then now with CDC guidelines changing uh, up to 10 days. And there have really been few instances of transmission uh, based on our data that we see taking place on campuses with our COVID protocols uh, in place. And what I mean by that is when we have seen uh, someone uh, deemed as close contact due to close contact with someone that is uh, COVID positive, uh, we've not seen those students or staff members then uh, end up becoming uh, positive with COVID-19. So I don't have to tell you this because I think I, everyone was watching the news yesterday when the governor announced uh, about lifting the mask mandate and opening uh, Texas is 100% uh, on March 10th. Uh, in terms of a school district, caught off guard a little bit, the fact that not aware that that was going to be made, and the Texas Education Agency had not shared any information. Uh, late yesterday, we did receive information from the Texas Education Agency that tomorrow afternoon uh, there is a special conference call from across the state uh, to share uh, the revised health guidelines for schools uh, based on this new information from the governor. And so we are waiting to hear from uh, the commissioner uh, of education tomorrow and then begin to make plans that we will be communicating with you as soon as possible on what it is going to look like uh, in Burnett CISD in addressing uh, the health and safety protocols from this point forward. As I mentioned, uh, it was important to us from day one to be able to offer in-person instruction and remote instruction. As you read uh, the, the news and watch the news, you've probably seen that school districts across the state and across the nation uh, decided to just go fully remote from day one, able to offer uh, in-person uh, instruction, a more and more robust remote instruction, uh, given that we had the opportunity during the summer to plan uh, for that and be able to provide devices for students to facilitate that. Um, when we started the school year, 20% uh, of our students were remote learners. Uh, today, 8% of our students are uh, remote learners. And I will tell you, uh, our goal for next year as we're beginning the planning process right now for next year is to have 100% uh, of our students be remote learners. Again, we're going to have to wait for guidance from the Texas Education Agency on any requirements to offer remote instruction beyond this school year and what is funded and what is not funded. Uh, but our goal is to offer 100% uh, in-person instruction uh, for the next school year uh, because we believe that's the best instruction for our students. We also knew that during this time, uh, this is a challenge not only for school districts, but COVID-19 has posed challenges for our families. And we wanted to be uh, very much aware of that in the actions that we've taken. And so you've seen that in ways like uh, having a moratorium this year on most of the fundraisers that we typically do because we didn't want to be asking uh, parents or businesses for, for money uh, during a pandemic situation. Uh, we were able to provide uh, school supplies for all of our students uh, this year at no cost to families to try and take that burden off of them. Uh, and then with the help of the USDA, we were able to provide free and free lunch uh, all school year. And we're super excited to be able to offer that in person and continuing to offer uh, grab and go meal service for those students that are uh, remote learners. You know, through all these plans, uh, the people that are most in charge of implementing those plans are our teachers. And I just want to take a moment and recognize the fact that our teachers are superheroes. Uh, when you say that you're offering uh, remote instruction and in person instruction, someone's having to manage that. And our teachers. And so uh, I can't tell you how proud I am of, of our teaching staff and how they are taking care of the instructional needs of, of our students, but they're also taking care of the social and emotional needs of our students. We have seen uh, that this pandemic has caused uh, social and emotional issues for our students. And so as much as our teachers are there to provide outstanding instruction, they're there to be uh, a create a system of support for our students and they are to be applauded. And when you talk about our teaching staff, you know, the very best of the best of our teaching staff are our teachers of the year. 
just this past Monday, we had the opportunity to, to recognize our teachers of uh, the year. They are uh, from Burnett High School, Diane Woods, from Quest High School, Holly Bauer, from Burnett Middle School, Shelley Townsend, RJ Ritchie Elementary, Christina Carmichael, from Bertram Elementary, Stacy Snyder, and from Shady Grove Elementary, Tammy Laws. Uh, congratulations to our Teachers of the Year. Like I said, they, they do represent the very best and the excellence uh, that is uh, Burnett CISD. Another group of people that I want to recognize are our Board of Trustees. Uh, there is not another group of people that I would want to be working side by side with during a pandemic than this group uh, of trustees. Uh, they not only have provided outstanding support around every corner, every decision, uh, their first question is, how is this going to impact our students? How is this going to impact our staff? Uh, they just have care and concern uh, for our staff and students. And so I so much appreciate them uh, and that support they provide to all of us. At the same time, they're holding us accountable, holding us accountable for the job that, that we're called to do in terms of providing outstanding instruction for students and making sure that we're spending our, our money wisely and making sure that we're taking care of our taxpayers by having as, as low a tax rate uh, as possible. And so I, I do wanna say thank you uh, to our, our president, Andy Field, Vice President, Angela Moore, our secretary, Earl Foster, trustees, uh, Suzanne Brown, Ross Burns, Mark Kincaid, and Robbie Robertson. Uh, again, outstanding volunteer representatives representing this community uh, through their service on the school board. Well, let me take a, man, a minute and just uh, brag. Uh, today in Burnett CISD, we're very proud that we are first in compensation and benefits that we provide uh, to staff among surrounding uh, districts. Not only do we say that we care for teachers and that they are a critical uh, component of what we do, uh, but we pay them uh, at, a, at a, a level at which we lead the market. And so that's not just teachers, but that's uh, all of our compensation plans. And so we're extremely proud of that. Uh, in addition, at the same time, we're able to have the second uh, lowest tax rate among area school districts. And that didn't happen uh, by accident. Um, and so we're very proud. And it's been a goal of ours uh, throughout the years to be able to lower that tax rate and have the lowest tax rate possible while also maintaining outstanding programs and making sure that we do have that market leading uh, compensation for our staff. And then this is a really exciting uh, accolade. Our Esprit de Corps uh, placed third place uh, out of 206 4A uh, marching bands at the state marching competition. And so uh, another point uh, that I want to share with you is that school districts across uh, the state have made decisions maybe not to offer all of the extracurriculars this year. Uh, but we were committed uh, to making this school year as typical as possible. And that means offering uh, all of our extracurricular activities. And boy, our esprit de corps hit a home run by earning the bronze medal at the state marching competition. Again, uh, besting over 200 other school districts or other high schools uh, in the 4A category. Uh, we are committed to being the very best at everything we do, whether it's in marching band or or even in uh, athletics. And so super proud of the fact that, for example, our volleyball team and our basketball teams all were by district champions. And then uh, have to give a shout out to Andy Arista and Hudson Bennett for uh, qualifying for the state cross country meet. And what's really exciting is that they're gonna be back next year. And we expect them to do extremely well at that state level competition. Another group we're super proud of is our, our culinary arts team. Uh, somewhat of a new program. Uh, they have been an award-winning culinary arts program and uh, we're super excited. You know, they've always produced kind of out of this world uh, meals if you've ever had a chance to go to one of their uh, Bulldog Bistros, but they are competing in an out of this world competition this year. In fact, they have been invited by NASA to participate in the NASA Hunch competition. And so they are actually in the process of developing a recipe uh, that will be judged by NASA officials and astronauts uh, for the chance to be selected uh, to actually be prepared and served in space. 
as a meal for uh, our future space mission. And so we're super excited. Uh, the competition is coming up here soon, and we just hope that uh, our high school space dogs uh, have that winning recipe and that, that some astronauts in the future will who uh, designed here in Burnett, Texas. Another group of students that are extremely hardworking and been successful, you know, our FA, FFA program has a long history uh, of excellence and they've continued that excellence this year with individual and team accolades. And I'm just not sure there's another group of, of students that for extended period of time work as hard as these students. You know, they're putting in the hours and before school, after school, whether it's prepping for a competition, uh, building an ag mechanics project, or uh, taking care of their animals. You know, the reality is a, a goat, a, a hog, a bull, they don't take the day off. And so our students are uh, putting in the hours before school, after school, uh, and still hitting a home run in the classroom, uh, and learning skills that they're gonna take with them for the rest of their life, uh, preparing for the workforce uh, in many cases. So we're super proud of our FFA program. Well, let me share just a, a few quick numbers with you. Today we have 3,090 students. That's about 100 students less than we were, where we were at last year. And exists across the state of Texas. Uh, what we saw is that pre k students uh, decided to stay home of coming to school, uh, we expect to see $221 million budget. This, every day, three meals are served uh, and our travel over three over the 700 square miles that make up uh, burn at CISD. In terms of accountability and achievement, uh, in terms of academic accountability, uh, we've received a letter grade of B from the Texas Education Agency. In terms of financial accountability, we've received a letter grade of A uh, from TEA. Our graduation rate is at 96%, which uh, bests the state average. Super proud of that. We're also very proud that 97% of our high school students participate in career and technical uh, education courses, and that our students at the high school level uh, last year earned 1,580 hours of college hours while in high school. So not only are we preparing students for, for college, but as you can tell from our 97% participation rate in CTE courses, we're also preparing them for uh, the world of work and the workforce up ahead. I will say a special thank you to uh, Burnett High School. I have a freshman at the University of North Texas, and I'm already seeing the savings uh, by him earning some of those college uh, hours uh, at Burnett High School. Last year, I talked about our one-to-one -one initiative. We hadn't yet uh, to purchase the devices yet, uh, but we have purchased those devices that we were planning on and more. Because last year, when I talked about the one-to-one -one technology initiative, it was really an enhancement to our uh, curriculum program. Well, today, especially given COVID, uh, it is a requirement uh, to have the devices for our students so that we have a continuity of learning, uh, whether the students are on campus or away from campus. Uh, today, every middle school and high school student has a device that is checked out to them, and so they take it to school and to home uh, every day. And then we have a sufficient number of devices at the elementary level in which we have a one-to-one -one ratio of device uh, per student. Uh, you're going to be hearing in just a minute that we're going to be asking as part of the May 2021 bond uh, to have funding for those replacement devices. Uh, and that we'll be structuring the bond in a way uh, so that we're not paying for a, a, a Chromebook over a 20 year period, but on a, on a shorter, uh, time period, uh, because really uh, that expense, it's, it's well, it's, uh, approaches close to $2 million when you're talking about providing uh, student devices uh, in Burnett CISD, and uh, the operating bud budget is uh, going to have a very challenging time uh, to be able to afford those strictly out of the operating uh, budget. 
So I referenced the May 2021 bond election. So let, let me uh, wrap up my presentation by sharing just a little bit of information about the May 2021 uh, bond program. You know, as superintendent, I know that uh, the community expects a lot of me. They expect me to lead today, making decisions that impact day-to-day uh, -day operations, but they also expect me to be thinking out five to 10 years. And that's exactly what uh, this board of trustees and our administrative team uh, has always been committed to, always looking out ahead and trying to be proactive in our planning multiple years uh, into the future. That's, and that's an important part of why uh, we're having the May 2021 uh, bond election. In fact, one of the first questions I get is, why are you having the May 2021 uh, bond election? And really, there are three main reasons. The first is we need to prepare for growth. Uh, that means uh, expanding the capacity at Bertram Elementary. It's our smallest elementary today. We know that uh, the growth that we uh, are going to experience, that we have experienced, it's first taking place in that Eastern portion of the district. And so we wanna add a classroom wing at Bertram Elementary in order to increase uh, the capacity uh, there. Uh, we also have evidence of growth uh, when you look at Liberty Hill ISD. Uh, they are going to be having a bond election on the exact same date as, as us. Uh, they are going to be asking for $490 million uh, half a billion dollars to address the growth that's taking place. In fact, the superintendent there is calling the growth uh, staggering. They're expecting to double in size uh, as a school district by 2025. And every indication is that growth is going to spill over uh, into Burnett CISD and first going to be at Bertram Elementary. In fact, we're projecting that Bertram Elementary will exceed its capacity by the year 2022. We want to be proactive in planning for that growth, though, because we don't want to end up in a situation where uh, Liberty Hill is today. So Liberty Hill ISD, on their INS, the interest in sinking tax rate, they are at 50 cents on their INS tax rate. That is the highest level allowed by uh, state law. In comparison, our tax rate is at 19.5 cents uh, on the INS side. And so uh, when you have... Uh, staggering growth, and you're having to build campuses like that, and you ever get behind the curve at all in terms of growth, then you have to raise your tax rate. Our goal is to have uh, this bond program and possibly another bond program in another five uh, to six years to ad address future growth, projected growth, and that both bond programs have no impact on uh, the district's tax rate. Uh, but we wanna be proactive. If we're not proactive, then we may find ourselves having to raise the tax rate uh, as you see the example in uh, Liberty Hill ISD. Uh, another reason we wanna take advantage of the current financial environment. And so uh, interest rates are extremely low today. And so we want to make sure that when we're borrowing money, we're borrowing it at the, the lowest interest rate possible. Uh, at the same time, what we know is inflation is driving construction costs up. And so every project that we can get done uh, today, it's going to cost less today than if we wait into the future. In fact, many of these projects were on our 2019 uh, bond program uh, that did not pass. And we've had to add an inflation rate to each one of those projects because of uh, the rising cost of construction, uh, especially as pent up demand uh, for bond projects uh, take place in other school districts across the state, we're going to see probably uh, a lot of competition for getting contractors to come in and do uh, the work. And so we want to address those issues as soon as possible identified in our bond so that we're getting them at the, at the uh, lowest cost possible. And then finally, we wanna protect and preserve uh, the district's operating budget. So we are projecting today going into next year, a $500,000 deficit on the operating uh, budget. Again, that's based on uh, lagging enrollment. Uh, we believe that that enrollment is going to bounce back, uh, begin to bounce back next year, uh, and then fully recover uh, the following school year. Uh, by taking care of the needs identified in uh, the bond program, uh, that means that we're not going to have to address uh, facility issues, uh, technology issues out of the operating budget. 
And so if you're already facing a $500,000 deficit on the operating budget, if we can remove some of the pressure from it of buying those things out of, of uh, from the operating budget and put that expense over on the INS side, uh, then that helps to preserve our operating budget that helps to pay our, our staff and provide the materials and supplies and equipment and travel that it takes to run the school district. So because of a new law, House Bill 3, that was passed in the last legislative session, uh, you're going to see something different uh, in the, on the ballot in terms of the number, the number of propositions that are offered. Uh, not only in our bond, but probably a, across the state. We already saw some evidence of it uh, in November when the, the law first kicked in. In fact, in Burnett CISD, you are going to see four separate propositions on uh, the ballot. And that's because uh, the new law that states that athletic projects and technology projects have to be separate and apart uh, from uh, a proposition that deals with new buildings, renovations, or uh, school buses. And so I want to walk you through those four uh, propositions just briefly. And I'm going to be using the actual ballot language that you'll see when you walk in uh, to the poll. So Proposition A is for $27,496,000, and the ballot says it's for improvements to school facilities district-wide, accommodations for growth and student enrollment, and school buses. And so uh, some of the projects that are included in Proposition A include that Bertram addition, that classroom wing that will increase the capacity to 700 students, renovations at all of our existing campuses, uh, including uh, adding an isolation area to each of our nurses station due to COVID protocol, uh, many of our drives and parking lots. And then finally, uh, replacement buses are also included. We travel over, uh, again, over 3,600 miles every day, over 700 square miles. We put a uh, wear and tear on our buses, and so we're in need of replacing uh, many of our buses. The other thing that I will point out is, and I've underlined it, at the end of each ballot statement, it says this is a property tax increase. And so pay attention to that because I'm going to come back to that after I finish reviewing uh, the four propositions. So Proposition B is for $11,805,000. It's for middle school and high school athletic facilities. And so this proposition will separate our middle school and athletic facilities preparing for growth. And so it will... Uh, create a middle school athletic field that is turfed with a six lane track and seating for approximately 300 uh, people. That will allow middle school and high school events to take place uh, simultaneously. It also creates a high school, a new high school weight room. Uh, the creation of the new high school weight room will allow the middle school uh, to move into the uh, current uh, weight room. Again, allowing both of those uh, middle school and high school to access weight rooms at uh, the exact same time. And then it also includes uh, turfing our baseball and softball field. And so that practices and games are never uh, interrupted due to weather, uh, which especially in the springtime, uh, we've experienced quite a bit. Proposition C is for 4,288,000. It's for technology improvements district-wide, including instructional technology, infrastructure, and campus security. So some of the projects that are included in that include uh, student and teacher devices, the infrastructure to make sure that we have the speed and reliability to run all of that technology across the district, uh, an enhanced new phone system. Our old phone, phone, phone system is beginning to uh, age out. And so we, we deem it as a security issue and making sure that every classroom uh, has a communication device to uh, the outside world and to uh, our office. Uh, it also includes classroom uh, data projectors, security cameras at the high school. Uh, again, that system is aging out. And then finally, uh, adding prox card access to all classroom doors. Today, we have uh, process, process uh, card access to all of our exterior doors. And so in, given an emergency situation, at a push of a button, we could lock down every exterior door. 
uh, adding a proxy card access to every classroom door would allow us to do the same thing in that we could push one button during emergency situation and every classroom door uh, would automatically lock. And then finally, Proposition D is for $8,915,000, and that is for a multi-purpose student activity center. So that is a 50,000 square foot metal building with roll-up doors uh, and uh, fans for ventil ventilation. Uh, it will allow our, it has a turf surface, so it will allow our athletic teams, our band, our cheer, elementary field days, and PE classes uh, to take place in an all-weather uh, environment so that weather would never interrupt any uh, any of those activities. Uh, it's actually uh, the concept is actually an extended sideline area so that our band could actually practice uh, coming off of a sideline onto uh, the field uh, for their band competitions. And then as a reminder that underlined section this is a property tax increase uh, that was underlined on each one of those uh, ballot propositions, and this is exactly the language that you'll see uh, when you go to a polling location. Uh, that language was actually mandated uh, by a new state law, and it has to be on every uh, bond election, no matter what the financial situation of a school district. Uh, what's important to know is even though that language is required to be on there, uh, in Burnett CISD, we are not projecting a tax rate increase associated with this bond. So uh, this bond could pass and voters would not see an impact to uh, their tax rate. In fact, we're, we would be projecting that in August we would be lowering the tax rate by at least a minimum of a half a cent. And one of the ways that we're able to make that projection over the 20 year life of the bond uh, deals with some of the assumptions that we used in developing the bond program. First, we typically, even though it's a 20 year note, we typically pay off uh, our debt early on average at 15 years. Uh, we're projecting a 2.42% interest rate as part of uh, this bond program. And then in terms of property value, uh, we're projecting a 5% growth in property value during year one through six of the bond program. And then after year six, we're projecting zero property value growth. And so we were very conservative in the assumptions we used so that we can say with confidence that we would not have to raise the INS tax rate uh, to service uh, this bond. We have bonding capacity of $63 million today and this current bond project adds up to just right at 52, uh, over $52 million. Uh, again, our assumptions are very conservative. Uh, as proof during the pandemic, uh, we saw property values increase in Burnett CISD by 6%. So we always want to be extremely conservative when, when making financial forecasts. And as I said, uh, our board of trustees, our administration are committed to having the lowest tax rate possible. We've shown that over the last five years, we've lowered our tax rate by a total of 18.4 uh, cents, uh, making us, again, having the second lowest tax rate uh, among area school districts. And then we are expecting in August to lower our tax rate by a minimum of at least a half a cent uh, this upcoming August. And then as a reminder, uh, there are two buckets uh, that our tax rate uh, funds. So we do have the M&O maintenance and operation tax rate. Uh, today it's at 95.1 cents. And then our INS interest and sinking tax rate is at 19.5 uh, cents. I, I have had the question, you know, why don't you go ahead and pay teachers uh, out of the INS rate uh, because people would vote to approve that. And the simple answer is it's against the law. We're not able to use uh, proceeds from approved uh, INS uh, budget to pay for uh, salaries of our teaching staff, our administrators, counselors, or librarians. So there is no way that I could uh, cover every project that makes up the May 2021 bond uh, program, but you have access to all of the information uh, to find out what is exactly on uh, the May 2021 uh, ballot. And so I would encourage you to go to www.burnettcisd.net. That's our homepage for the district's webpage. Up in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a May 2021 uh, link 
click that and that will take you to the bond website where we have a listing of every project by proposition. We have frequently asked questions and I would encourage you to, to study those. Those are actual questions from community members that we have uh, provided answers for. And so maybe you have the same question uh, that is on there. We also have some financial information and tax information and the ability uh, to submit another question. So if you ask a question, we're going to answer that question uh, for you. If you're not registered to vote, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, city of Bertram, City of Burnett, both going to be having council elections and then our bond election. Uh, the deadline to register to vote is April 1st. So again, I would always encourage you to, uh, to be a registered voter. And then I just wanna wrap up and say it's been a pleasure to be able to share uh, some information with you about the district. We pride ourselves on being proactive and communicating uh, with our stakeholders. And so I would encourage you, uh, check out our website, check us out on social media. We're constantly putting out uh, information about the district and sharing the good news of some of the outstanding uh, work that our staff and our students are doing. Uh, thanks for joining me today, and I hope uh, you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you.